Hello, and in this series for novice Python learners, we'll be going through as many common issues facing you as possible. You can always leave anything you want covered in the next 5 minute episode in the comments below and I'll do my best to answer them all. Without further ado, let's get to our first topic. Here we have the doc strings of the base64 built in as a text file. Our aim is to extract only a certain part of the text. Our solution will be to surround the text of interest with five asterisks at the start and five asterisks at the end. The principles apply more generally to other sources of input. As part of our solution, we'll be using context managers. If you haven't come across them before, our first line here means that we'll open this file and in the subsequent indented block, this open file can be accessed through F. We'll iterate over every line in the file from start to finish, and if we come across five asterisks in a row, then we'll move on to the next part of the code. This is how we'll be ignoring the text up until the first marker. For each of the remaining lines in our file, we'll print it to the terminal, unless of course we come across five asterisks again, in which case we'll break out of this part of the code. We'll just use print line here, in place of any specific processing code that you may have, at which point we come to the end of the context manager, which makes sure that the file is closed for us. Let's start by only including one set of five asterisks. The whole file is printed, we can get rid of the double spacing like so. Now when we include the end set of five asterisks, we get only our selection printed. The reason for including the dot strip string method is to ensure that any spaces prior or any spaces subsequent to our five asterisks don't stop them from working. If we didn't include this, then this five asterisks with all these spaces before it will mean that it's not equal to five asterisks as we have it here. Let's turn our attention to file paths. One of Python's strengths is the ease with which we can write language agnostic software. This path by itself is a valid one to the file that we had open earlier. So it can be a surprise that we get an OS error when we try to open it. The problem is that backslash b is interpreted as an escape sequence, meaning an ASCII backspace. You can read all about them in this part of the documentation. Fortunately, a few spaces up from this entry is the double backslash, which has the meaning that we're after, which is a single backslash, literally. When we convert our path to include double backslashes, it works. Alternatively, we can include a lowercase r just prior to our string, which means that Python will interpret it as a raw literal and interpret backslashes as backslashes. More generally, we can use forward slashes, but that won't work on Linux. An altogether superior strategy is to use the OS built-in. The join method takes path components and tries to intelligently join them together. I say intelligently because as you can see here, it's missed out a vital backslash. The variable os.sep is a backslash in Windows systems and a forward slash on Linux, as we can see printed here on this Windows system. So to correct this mistake, all we need to do is include os.sep between the drive and the next argument. We could even use the newer built-in pathlib, which defines the path class. You can see that despite the fact that I've written the path with forward slashes, it's detected the path as a Windows one and replaced them with backslashes. And if we print the type of A, we can see that it's actually a Windows path class. Two quick ones to finish, always make sure whether you're learning something new, whether you're trying to encounter the problem that your code is facing, or whether you've installed a package and it's not working, always check whether it's Python 2 or 3. We'll only cover Python 3, and new Python projects should be in Python 3. If you end up at a large company with millions and millions of lines of Python 2 code, then there might be a delay in porting all of that to Python 3. Here we've tried to get the user input with raw input, but that changed to input in Python 3. 
Finally, if part of your code involves doing nothing, for instance, you have an inherited class that's just a placeholder, your code won't work unless you include the Python statement pass, and that's needed to tell Python not to expect anything as an indented block and to move on to the next unindented line. How quickly time flies, and that's the end of our five minutes for today. These will be every other day, so make sure you come back as one way of improving your Python progress.